Tales of the Legion Project podcast, The Legion of Superheroes 2023 Animated Movie. Hello and welcome to the 15th episode of the Tales of the Legion Project podcast. I'm your host, Peter. And I am your host, Eric. And we are here today, as we do with all the Tales episodes, to talk about a Legion-centric project, usually outside of the run of the books that we're covering on the main Legion Project podcast. Sometimes we do annual, sometimes we do special, sometimes we do mini-series, and like today, we get to look at the Legion in other media. So that is today's topic of discussion, the 2023 animated movie, Legion of Superheroes. Are you ready, Eric? Yes, but I, I can you believe that we've gotten two animated movies featuring Legion of Superheroes characters? loosely Lo- yes yeah, Legion of yeah. Superheroes characters. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i just it just uh it boggles my mind that we have we have uh, the legion continues to be um continues to percolate within the the imaginations of those who make such things right. so i i do appreciate that even if perhaps they miss the mark on some things <laughs> Right. So you're referencing the Justice League versus Fatal Five movie, right? Which was yes. 2019. Mm-hmm. That came out in 2019. And was and it's what's interesting about that is I, I listened to that episode again. Um, at the end of it, we were talking, uh, and especially you were talking about the potential after that movie, since they introduced a bunch of Legionnaires, whether they were the main characters or just cameos. Um and that was one of your things is you were hoping that that could have been like a, you know, a kickoff or whatever. A launching point. A yeah. launching point. Yeah. So. And then we get this. <laughs> Not only this, but a whole entire different universe. Too, yeah. Yeah. In many yeah. Ways, so. Well, now I guess technically that previous move. Oh, and uh, what do you remember? What, what tales episode was that? What number was that? I don't remember what number, but it was okay. early on in our. Yeah. I can yeah. look it up. That movie was part of the previous set of DC animated movies. And this one is, is very clearly uh, set within the, the new, I guess you could even say post flashpoint because they actually did a flashpoint movie uh, and not the, not the current flash movie live action movie that's in theaters right now, as we record this. Um, uh, but this is part of the tomorrow verse, right? that they're calling it. Uh, so yeah, so this is the sixth film in, in the tomorrow verse, but it's the, if I got my numbers correct here, it's the 50th in the DC animated movie list. Wow. 50 of these movies. And I have a very good chunk of those movies on disc. So I, when I, when they started with that Superman movie from, I don't know when 400 years ago, um, I started buying them all of them pretty much yeah. Uh, until they got to the later movies and they kind of uh, tried to be a little more adult in their, in their presentation. I won't say content, but in the presentation and it's just, it just, I don't know, maybe I was in just in a different mindset or whatever, but I found them less appealing. Mm-hmm. And so I've been a lot pickier about the ones that I actually buy. And, but, but I did buy this one. Okay. I did, I did buy the Blu-ray here. So. So what is what is the tomorrow verse other than it just being a new continuity after Flashpoint? What do you think sets apart this version of what we were getting f- before Flashpoint? Well, it's, it's you, I guess you could since we're talking about Flashpoint, it, it, 
they have kind of framed it sort of like the new 52 of the DC animated movie verse. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they started with a, uh, they started the tomorrow verse with a Superman film launching, launching this out. Um, and it was basically super, uh, you know, Superman starting over with the DC universe. And although they played fast and loose with, with the timeline and, and characters and situation. And I'm going off of my very foggy memory because I've only seen the movie once and I don't know how long ago that was now, but, um, and then, yeah, they've just been doing some other films. I, I quite honestly, I don't know that I've watched a whole lot of the tomorrow verse films. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I have a few of them. I bought a few of them, like the, the one that is referenced in this movie, which is the, uh, JSA World War II, I believe is what they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there are several that I have been, have been meaning to watch that are on Max or H, you know, then it was HBO Max, but you know, right. whatever, whatever the hell they're calling it today by the time you listen to this. So yeah, I, I, I couldn't really speak to it uh, quite honestly because I haven't watched that many of them. Yeah, probably I would think it's just a little more interconnected than whatever we got previous to that. Because you could make the yeah. argument that those movies pre flashpoint existed in the same universe, but did they, I haven't seen them, but did they You're really right. connect? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and they did a lot of adaptations of, of yeah. well-known yeah. story storylines. Right. So um, yeah, I, I agree. This is, this, this is very much um, a much more interconnected universe. I mean, the, like I said, it, it, it harkens back to that previous movie. They brought back a lot of the voice or some of the voice actors that uh, that have appeared in previous movies. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're 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 doing their best to do this. But I it uh, it does appeal to me in some sense because um, the, of the movies I've seen, it's less like I said, less adult uh, representation, uh, less violence. Uh, less, quite honestly, blood, bloody, bloodiness in, in the movies. There, they were, they were really starting to lean into that part of, uh, or that aspect of of those those later previous movies. Mm-hmm. And I see less of that uh, of the ones I've seen. Anyway, there's a little bit in this one. I mean, it is it, this thing is rated PG-13 for some language and or, or some violence and language. Right. Right. So. So they didn't even quite abandon that, you know. It's not. It's not a. It's not like um like the Legion of Superheroes, uh, uh, animated series, that I think we we've talked a little bit about it, or at least some episodes anyway. Um, uh, it's not that level of of kid fare, but uh, it's yeah. you know it's kind of straddles that that bridge a little bit between one extreme and 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 another perhaps. Right. They're clearly marketing it to comic book fans. Um, I can't imagine there's a, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking out my butt, but the casual superhero consumer TV and movie consumer, are they also like, oh yeah, here's another installment of Hmm. WB animation or, you know, is the person that got into Batman, the animated series, how many decades ago and is still following Warner brothers animation. I mean, are there, I, I guess there are people like that, you know? Otherwise, I think, no, this has to tar- try, I'm assuming they're trying to target people who know, people who come from comics or or at least have a good understanding of what comics are, as opposed to the general audience, you know? Like, is Ma and Pa and some 8, 12, 15-year-old who watches manga or TikTok all day, are they going in and going, oh, uh-huh. what's this? Legion of Superheroes, that looks cool. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I I think I agree with you with that. With that. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, considering that it's Legion too, Legion yeah. of Superheroes is not you know they're not a household name. Yeah. Despite the fact that we have gotten, this is one of the things I wanted to I wanted to talk to you about eventually uh, in our discussion here. You know, Legion of Superheroes characters have appeared in uh, other other series, uh, some live action shows. I'm thinking Smallville. Supergirl. Um, Supergirl, yes, exactly. So, and and yeah, then there's there's that connection, this the the Supergirl uh, television series with what some aspects of what's in this movie as well. And so, on, well, that was one of my questions I was going to ask you was, uh, you know, what were, were they trying to have some synergy between the two? Because there are some, like I said, there's some similarities between some characters here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that'll be a discussion point. So will the Tomorrowverse stuff when we get into it. Uh, I saw this on HBO Max. You saw it physically, yes? You, you mm. Right, is that how you watched it? Yep, uh, my yeah. Blu-ray, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have some background information. I don't know if you have any. Uh, Jeff Womister is your director, who is also directing the next one, War World, uh, and directed the Green Lantern, Be- Beware My Power, the JSA one. 37 episodes of Guardians of the Galaxy, which I didn't even realize had gone on much longer than that, actually. What? There was a Guardians of the Galaxy series? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I had no idea. Neither did I. And he did a bunch of other stuff. Your writer, Josie Campbell, uh, also doing the upcoming War World movie, did a bunch of stuff on She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Right now, Kapow, Jurassic World Camp uh, Cretaceous um and wrote the most recent shazam ms marvel shazam miniseries and also i did not realize this uh wonder woman black and gold number five future state green lantern number two not Mm. number one but number two okay and some other some other things from dc yeah so i i take it josie campbell is primarily um uh, TV movie writer and then got into comics. Mm-hmm. That's okay. um, that's the game now in the past yeah. five, six, seven years, whether that's a plus or a minus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I don't have any information on the voice acting, which is terrible. Oh, I do of me. So good. Take it away. I do. Okay. So we have, uh, I, I'll just highlight the, the like the real, the main characters and, and the yep. legionnaires. There's some other, other folks as well, but, uh, Meg Donnelly is, uh, is our super girl. Um, okay. So here, here are some other credits for her. I have no idea <laughs> what, what this is. Uh, she played Taylor Otto in American housewife, which was an ABC sitcom. I had, I don't know this, uh, Addison in the it was a 2018 Disney channel, original movie zombies and its sequels. I'm sure, I'm sure my granddaughter, Madison probably knows about this. I have no idea. Uh, Harry. Uh, I want to say Shum Jr. is the voice actor for Brainiac 5. Uh, he was on Glee as Mike Chang. Okay. I, I watched a little bit of Glee, but I don't remember that character. But it's also been a, a bajillion years since I've seen that. Um, also has appeared on Grey's Anatomy as Benson. Again, I don't. Magnus uh, Bain on Shadowhunters, which is a series that Maddie is currently watching so but i i i i I couldn't point him out i could if if she was watching an episode and he was in i could not i don't i have no idea right uh okay so real quick uh cynthia uh hamidi is dawnstar gideon adlin phantom girl uh eli henry bouncing boy robbie damon timberwolf yuri lowenthal is monel uh who has a, a quite a a long career in Animation and anime as a voice actor. Uh, he's appeared in Naruto, Ben 10, Afro Samurai, among others. Curiously, he also voiced Spider-Man in several video games. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, ben Diskin is arm fall off boy. <laughs> uh, forgive me if I giggle every time I say that throughout <laughs> this episode. Victoria Grace is Shadow Last. Jennifer Hale uh, is Supergirl's mother, Allura. Uh, Daisy Lightfoot is Triplicate Girl. Uh, Zeno Robinson is Invisible Kid. So those are your Legionnaires. And then uh, we have Darren Chris as Superman and Jensen Ackles of Supernatural fame as Batman. Right. And a few others. And that's uh, Jensen Ackles. They're they're trying so hard. They're pushing him so hard to be Batman in the live action stuff now. I just don't see it. <laughs> plus, he's, plus he's 45 years old. Oh my God, I mean, is he really? Yes. Wow, I did not know. He does not look it. No, I'll give him. I'll give him that. No. It's because he's also in Boys right now as Soldier oh, Boy right. or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. Um, I I will say though cool. he I uh, uh, I I've seen pictures of him on Instagram and, and so every Halloween he would dress up, and he 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 does it. I don't you know he uh, he has the means and the connections. I guess he's got some really damn good superhero costumes that he's cosplayed <laughs> as. Including um, Batman connection, he did. Uh, I think Red Hood mm. uh, is the last one that I remember seeing, but but he's yeah. done others as well. So he has 
he has the desire for sure to do this, this kind of, to be associated with superheroes in some way. Right. Okay. Uh, do you have a synopsis for this movie? Well, I have the, uh, I, 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 the, there's the back of the DVD or the Blu-ray, which gives a a really high level, uh, thing. So let's do that. All right. Uh, okay. The future of justice. Welcome to the 31st century and the Legion Academy, where a new generation hones its powers and with hopes of joining the Legion of superheroes among, among its ranks is Supergirl who struggles to adjust to life on earth after devastating tragedy. Taking her cousin Superman's advice, Supergirl leaves her former space time to attend the Academy. She quickly makes new friends as well as a new enemy with old ties, Brainiac 5. But a nefarious plot lurks in the shadows. The mysterious group known as the Dark Circle seeks a powerful weapon held in the Academy's vault. Find out if the budding heroes can rise to stop them in this all-new DC Universe movie. Mm Mm-hmm. That's actually not too bad. I've, I've, I've read a lot of things like that and they're, they, they're little, uh, they, they leave uh, much to be desired at times. So that's not, <laughs> but that one was pretty good. Yeah. So Eric and I have no idea what we think of this movie, what each other thinks of this movie. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. We've been messaging back and forth and I, you've, you've said some things or, or typed <laughs> some things. So I, I could guess, I okay. could guess, <laughs> but you're uh, right. We, we don't know. We don't know specifics. All right, well, let's change it up a little bit here. What, let's start with what What do you think I think about this movie? Oh, okay. Uh, well, my my impression was is that uh, you, you weren't all that impressed with it. Okay. That's, that's okay. all I got. Okay. And I'm going to say you thought this was eh. Missed opportunities. It's pretty good. That's the, yeah. 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 Um, First of all, it should. Oh, I don't want to. Let me see. Don't start the what I think it should be game. Let me see. Okay. Let me. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, all my notes are what the movie wasn't. Um, that's Ooh, terrible. Interesting. That's interesting. terrible. Uh, let me see. Let me go. For, let me go. For, okay. Let me start here. This is a, a good thing. I'm new to the Tomorrow Verse. Um, I thought the animation actually was was interesting because it was slightly different than from what i'm used to certainly different from any of the tim stuff but felt like it was different from what i saw before that doesn't mean it was unique and interesting and wow and and and, yeah um groundbreaking i don't mean that god no i just mean it looks different from the other dc animated movies that i've seen which is in Mm -hmm. a lot Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know where it falls in like current, you know, I, uh, I could go back to the Voltron series on Netflix. That was amazing. You know, like that sort of American manga stuff that, um, that always falls on Netflix every now and then, uh, as being much more innovative and creative. And the story was amazing. You know, like it doesn't, it, it doesn't tickle me there. But there was something interesting about the thicker black lines and the silhouette yeah. of the characters that I, I appreciated. Again, not groundbreaking, just different. It gave it a different look. Um, uh, beyond, so, okay, so that's one, one sort of plus. Uh, not a high mark, but just, okay, there's that. Um, the, the whole Tomorrowverse thing you referenced that they referenced the previous Brainiac appearance. That completely, first of all, threw me off because I was like, wait, I have no idea what they're talking about. It's one line and I had no idea what they were talking about. So then I just quickly kind of researched that and realized that there's a lot of stuff that is happening between the movies, not even in the movies, but between the movies. For instance, in this one, Superman, when he introduces the Legion to Supergirl, says, you know, they were inspired by me and the formation of the Justice League, which apparently wasn't a thing prior to this, right? Like, there is no Justice League just yet. No? Am I getting that wrong? I don't. My Okay, bad memory, right? I've only seen the movie once, but I I, I seem to recall that there was a Justice League in the previous movie, but but 
but I, again, I, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I thought I saw because Flash was sort of integral to the World War II thing that he mm -hmm. was like, he got the idea to do the Justice League because of oh, maybe. that adventure. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that would make a lot of narrative sense if that were the uh, case. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I haven't seen everything. Listeners just take that for a grain of salt. So there's <laughs> there's like world building happening between movies too, as opposed to in the movies. Uh, it's kind of like, yeah, it's uh, like in the comics when, you know, things happen in the gutters and yeah. <laughs> here we are, you know, things happen between the uh, digital bits or something. I don't yeah. know. So you can, so I got right away, like looking at Batman's costume, looking at Flash's costume, you know, Ugh. any anytime they have a little chin guard thing and it's like, okay, clearly this is 52 base. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I'll, can I just say uh, the, the Flash, I, I hate, I hate the Flash's mask the way it that, mm. with the chin and the the no i it's it's just wrong it's all wrong they're, they're <laughs> doing it wrong <laughs> um what else did i like about this um i thought okay let's um meg donnelly a supergirl was fine i think um was probably the one voice that actually did what a voiceover what a voice actor should do you know because Certainly they give that character more emotion and more things to do. So you have to almost make sure that you're, if you're talking about voice acting and vocal variation and, and you know, uh, having that emotionality, that, that came fairly strong, I thought, through that mm -hmm. character. Yeah. Yeah. And probably only that character. Mm. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Um, so those were my pluses. What were your pluses? Um, oh, I thought we we're going to go with a negative source. <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, just, you know, I, I, I like the fact that we get more Legionnaires. We get a Legion movie, even though, uh, sorry, I can't, I, I can't help myself going into the other, other area. Sure. You know, it's, a, it's, it's called Legion of Superheroes, but it's really a Supergirl movie. Yes. Featuring the Legion of Superheroes. Right. Okay. Get that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, you know, I wondered if they were trying to, mm, uh, connect to the the stuff that was going on in the Supergirl television series. Again, I know only know a little bit of, uh, about it. So I because I didn't watch all of those episodes. Right. Uh, it just wasn't. Uh, it didn't. It didn't hold my interest. So I never continued with. It, even though the Legion appeared, um, I I did like how they mixed up things here with with the the Legion history and then where the characters were compared to what we are used to in the comic books. Sure. Regardless of whatever reboot version we're talking about, because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the the Legionnaires that are in the Academy are you know longstanding, and even even some of the first Legionnaires post the the Trinity. Uh, the founders, right? They were they they're they're somehow in the academy instead, right? So I thought I thought that was kind of neat. Um, I I even though it was predictable as as I'll get out, I liked the progression of the relationship between Supergirl and Brainiac Five. Um, but that's you know sometimes I I was wondering, do I like this because I like those two characters together in the comic books, and so I wanted to see more of that in this. I don't so I don't know. And then uh, certain specific character things like triplicate girls, you know, uh, take no crap attitude. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Um, uh, Dawnstar is completely a different character than, than we are used to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, uh, I like some of the music. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the, the dark circle theme is pretty awesome, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Um uh, and then we get, you know, we got Legion history in 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 the form of the Dark Circle, and uh, the Miracle Machine. Mm -hmm. You know, those little those little kind of uh, they're not really Easter eggs, but you know, connections to to our Legion and the Legion past and all that kind of stuff. You know, I appreciate that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think I recognized. I think they even tried to mimic the Supergirl theme from the TV show just a little bit here and there. Oh, it see, sounded I, just a little bit like it. I thought I heard a little bit of the Superman movie theme at the beginning, the credit in, sure. in the credits mm -hmm. part. So I, you know, I appreciate that too. Yeah. And that was certainly inspired. I have to imagine by Superman. Oh yeah. As, as she's traveling through the universe with the planets and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, what did you say? Um, yeah. I mean, the dark circle is one of my 
unwarranted favorite legion of superheroes villains you know yeah. I, I love their designs purple is my favorite color <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff you could do with them um not that this movie did that um i think there's a lot of potential in that in that yeah, yeah. um yeah and then you have all the other stuff <laughs> <laughs> all the other stuff that that you're right it should be called supergirl and the legion of superheroes yeah it is not about the legion of superheroes it's about the legion academy Mm, good and point. Yeah. Once again, you know, when we did that discussion on Justice League versus Fatal Five, we went backwards and watched several cartoon appearances of the Legion of Superheroes, right? We went all the way back to Superman animated series from 1998, right? And this movie felt like the same formula. You're just dealing with a handful of characters, some of whom are new. But many who are some of the core characters that we see here were were part of that Legion of Superheroes cartoon that we that you mentioned. You know, Brainiac Five, Bouncing Boy certainly was already there. Triplicate Girl, um, Phantom Girl, even Timberwolf to a degree. Now to get Chemical King, awesome. Oh yeah, wonderful, mm -hmm. great. You know, um, Dawnstar certainly new to the newish you know to the to being used it to that level right but why not give us first of all you you show us a legion that is comprised of every version of the legion we've ever read in the comics this is there is no one version that felt like it was more predominant than the other right oh well maybe, I, I, maybe the bend is silk first. yeah i was gonna say i i think i i agree with you um that that's what I think that's what they were going for. But man, from a just a visual standpoint, right. it it seems like they're really they were really pushing the 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 Sook designs. Sure, but I mean, we got Telus, we got Sensor Girl, we oh, got right, yeah, Chemical King. First of all, you can just you can start with Chemical King, right? You got <laughs> who were some of the other background ones, the ones that didn't oh, really God. show that it was like, oh my God, oh Comic Queen showed up, you know? Yeah, did yeah. we see Power Boy? I think I don't even remember. Yes, like, yes, yeah. we did. So that's what I mean. Okay, you're gonna you're going to touch on the entire history of the comic book version of the Legion of Superheroes, but you don't give us instead of Phantom Girl, you don't give us Gates, you don't give us some of the more alien members of the Legion of Superheroes. Mm -hmm. So so the core that they used, many of whom we've already seen in major as major players before, I thought was safe and boring quite honestly yeah. yeah plus they don't use the legion of superheroes they're off somewhere else and they show up at the end just like all the other appearances from previous cartoon versions that that's mm. what they do we see dribs and drabs and then we see the main team sort of i think the fatal five movie we actually got a fight scene with them um by the end but all the other ones was like, oh, let, let's let let the camera just sweep past them really fast, so you can <laughs> you can fanboy out as you yeah. freeze frame and go, well, there's that, per you know, oh, thank, thanks for the crumb. Well, I will I will admit, I I did I did do that fanboy uh, freeze frame throughout the movies. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I I I totally understand uh, what you're saying. So. Yeah, yeah. It, say I like what you said. It, it's very safe what they did, and and um, uh, yeah, uninspired. And I, I well, okay. Let me just ask. So, what uh, the whole academy thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes total sense in terms of the kind of story they're telling. With you know, they're not ready for prime time. Uh, what it? What, what was it that Triplicate Girl said? Uh, they are, they are waiting list material. <laughs> Oh, and <laughs> yeah, I love this. Not even the Legion of Substitute Heroes would have us, she says. <laughs> so they're even throwing the, the Legion subs into this mix with that. You know, we obviously don't see them, but, right. you know, it's just like it's this whole big, wide 31st century universe out there. But we, you know, we're seeing very, very little of it. Yeah. And that's part of the story that I wished. Um would have been, I wish they would have focused more on 
Supergirl's from Krypton. She feels out of place in the 21st century. Superman says, let's take you to the 31st century. And then it becomes a competition between her and Brainiac 5. Until the ending where things are about to explode with the miracle machine. And then she brings it back around to, oh yeah, I have to leave Krypton and my mother behind. Yeah. Well, yeah, we weren't, that development got totally lost in, in the middle stuff. Yeah. I think, I think there was one minor moment there where, but it was more focused on her, um, her reaction to Brainiac five being the, being the outcast mm-hmm. and no one liking him and being out of place. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I tied that back to um, her on earth, but you know, she's still feeling the trauma, I guess, of, of, of being the, the last survivor of, of, of Krypton in, mm-hmm. in the way that they presented it in this movie. Mm-hmm. But you're right. They have, have her mother at the beginning, which I like that relationship. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, between the two, um, I love. I again, the little changes they make. I love how Allura is is uh, making escape pods more than one. There's there are there are I don't know dozens, hundreds. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just one uh, that Jorel made. <laughs> the right. one Jorel made, um, uh, and it's not the whole Argo City floating, you know, Krypton floating city thing that we, you know, has been in the comics for decades. Mm -hmm. So I appreciated that kind of thing, but yeah, having that at the beginning and then at the very end and no connective tissue, really, then what's, what's the point? Yeah. I mean, what you said is interesting about Brainiac five, that she could eventually see him as others have seen her. I guess my issue with it is I'm bringing so much of that history that they're a couple and they were bringing all of the history that he is a brainiac and they just went through a story with brainiac yeah that it kind of overshot it doesn't it didn't feel to me that he was an outsider it felt to me that that he is what they said he was was like he can't be trusted he's a criminal not because of who he is but because of his lineage so that right. that's why i guess that didn't work for me i didn't see that connection that you mentioned even though now that you mentioned i was like oh okay yeah right i get that yeah, and this this really doesn't play into the movie, but the, just what you just said, um, uh, you know, the, uh, Brainiac Five is is uh, you know they're reacting to him because of his his familial history, and Supergirl is also dealing with that a little bit, uh, you know, the, the, being the cousin of Superman and and what that all entails. But mm-hmm. it's so. It's, it's, it's so glossed over yeah. with her, yeah. you know, it, she's dealing with, with being this person who's out of, out of, out of place, out of time. Um, everything is, you know, uh, uh, down is up, up is down for her. And then she gets to the 31st century and what, what is it that comforts her? Oh, a, a cute boy in mon show some interest in her and suddenly she's you know she wants to stay yeah it's just it goes they they try to touch on some some deep emotional things and then immediately go into um uh, tweener you know disney series territory yeah it really should have been an exploration of uh again i don't like to play this game but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we do we do anyway um she goes to the 31st century because super Bo- superman thinks that's where she's going to feel more comfortable she's going to learn she can learn among people her age in an environment that could remind her of krypton yes that what that a, makes sense what an excellent way to showcase the 31st century mm. through the eyes of of this young kryptonian not just one planet but multiple planets and multiple people from those planets who probably revere her because she is superman's cousin so wouldn't the i don't know the emotional um hook be that when she gets to the 31st century 
she thinks that's where she belongs, but yet has to learn that, oh, it's not about my surroundings. It's about me. Mm. It's not about, oh, now I'm in the 31st century. I'm Superman's cousin. I can do anything. Oh, wait, you don't understand intergalactic uh, connections. You don't quite understand what we're really doing here. You don't, you know, no, that's okay. If you want to include Brainiac, no, he's not a villain. He's a member of the, you know what I mean? Like, you have to show her that it is it is not just as simple as like what she was saying to that guy in the 21st century. Well, just have your robots fix your fix your apartment. <laughs> it's not that easy, right? You grew up in a society that that you know uh, it it was things were easy. You're now on Earth. You're now super powered. Things are easy. Well, things are not always easy, just because, right? I think that's that could have been. Okay, maybe like you said, maybe it's not interesting because they wanted the love interest thing or whatever, and they they want to appeal to girls, but I don't think they do because it's not named Supergirl and the Legion of Superheroes. That to me felt like if you're really going to world build your Tomorrow Universe, that's how you do it. Mm. You know, um, not through this. We've done this already. When Brainiac shows up, I was like, oh, <laughs> Brainiac again. Like I didn't even watch the JSA thing, and I was like. Why not have Brainiac? And we're going to get Brainiac in the dawn of DC. Like we're heading towards that too. It's like, why, what, Brain, what, what's with Brainiac? Why do we like Brainiac so much? <laughs> and he was in the uh, Superman animated thing. Like the, he was the big villain back then in the very first Legion of Superheroes. Uh, he, he was sort of in the Smallville stuff. So it's like, uh, why does it always have to be Brainiac? <laughs> so that's, those are like my big takeaways with, why i was really disappointed about it i actually watched it twice i watched it once and then a couple of weeks later right before we you know did this recording i was like let me watch it again i don't know if i could ever watch it again um you know the second time i was like i didn't skip anything but um you know it just is it's it's, it's sort of slow paced in many even for an action movie it's it's slow paced well, and especially, I mean, because uh, I, I watched it again as well. And, and boy, when I got to that competition set of scenes between Supergirl and Brainiac 5, I was like, oh, boy, I have to. And I only watched it once before. And I was like, oh, I got to watch this again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, You're right. I might have skipped through that. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could easily skip through that. Yeah. Um, Although that's, you know, that's where they develop the, you know, the, the, the romance between the two. Yeah. Of them. And it's a carryover from what she does with her mom. But again, it, it just, mm. I think they were being, I, I say the word safe. They were being a little too safe with this. I think that's, uh, I, like I said, I've only, so this, this must be the third of the Tomorrowverse movies I've actually watched. And that's kind of the word I would use to describe these movies in terms of, in terms of the, uh, the, the plots, the characterizations, the, the world building that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, while I may not have liked how they were going for more, like I said, adult themes or, or animation styles in the later, uh, the previous set of movies, um, at least they were visually interesting. Mm -hmm. at times yeah uh or or they were trying to or they were telling a an adaptation of a story that you know was was interesting from that standpoint although i guess you could say that's safe too for for doing that but so yeah i i i'm not so far i'm i'm not a big fan of the the tomorrowverse movies mm -hmm. um generally speaking they're they're fine um i i really hesitate uh wanting to purchase any of them uh, I, you know, this is, did I, did I, did I purchase the other? Yeah, I did. I purchased the JSA one just because it was JSA <laughs> and, you know, and obviously the Legion one because it's Legion, but uh, all the others is like, boy, I, I can, I can wait to watch them on HBO. Yeah. Yeah. And I still haven't. So maybe that tells you something right there. <laughs> is there a big, big point, uh, that you wanted to throw out there anything um uh, do we, well are, are, do we want to talk about the mm, dark circle brainiac 
and the surprise element of, of, of all of all that. Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you talked about Brainiac with, you know, well, first of all, um, you know, they, they, they do, I thought they did a somewhat okay job of making you think or making you suspect that Brainiac five had nefarious plans. I mean, he, he, you know, we see him spying on, uh, the, the triad of legionnaires who are basically leading everything Mm -hmm. while the rest of the group is off doing whatever they're doing. Um, uh, we, we get flashes, Supergirl sees dark circle members, you know, uh, lurking about. And, uh, then we get, uh, uh, uh Timberwolf in that meeting with, with shadow Lass and chemical King, you know, <laughs> basically giving us the, the four one, one on, on Brainiacs. And we find out that Brainiac two, three, and four were all really bad people. And so obviously Brainiac five has to be Right. <laughs> this, this bad dude, which, you know, would, you should know by that, by that alone, that things are not obviously what, what they appear. Um, but I will say while I was spoiled about this next surprise, oh. because I watched, and I already told Peter this <laughs> through text, um, because I watched, uh, when I got the Blu-ray, I put it in and as I often do with these things, uh, I will I will watch some of the the special features that they have, and they had one. Let me see what it's called here. Um, Meet the Legionnaires. Okay. I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool to see uh, the <laughs> the discussion about why this Legionnaire, what what are they doing differently, why why they chose them, and then um, they get to Monel, and in that discussion, that's when I found out that oh wait he's He's a member of the dark circle dun, right. dun, dun. Um, but regardless, I, th- I thought they did a pretty good job of very coyly giving you a clue at the very beginning mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And, and he just kind of, he's there yeah. in the uh, sort of in the background, the rest of the movie until the pivotal scene. Right. So that was a nice, I thought they, they did that. They set that up very, very nicely. Yeah. Um, and his, you know, the motivations, why he's doing this and all that kind of stuff. I, I buy that, you know, it's really hard to see quite honestly, though, you know, given, given, given our history with this character and the comic books, uh, to see him be the traitor, to be the bad guy or one of the bad guys. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was pretty well done. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew that, that I knew he was going to do the heel turn moments before he actually does it like yeah. when when he's involved in the whole let's go to this vault thing that houses this weapon you know you don't find out till what it is until later um there was just something in it that was just very ominous and i was like oh wait a minute you know <laughs> then when you watch it again he does have a line which i'm sure you're referencing he has a line early on when he meets kara um that is is straight out of the words of of the um the dark circle where he's he talks about krypton and he and he emphasizes conformity and order Mm -hmm. and i was like oh the second time i watched it i was like oh there it is that's that's the clue right there yeah um i liked the the using his character because it goes against first of all it goes against anything we may know as legion fans like no it can't be mon now what do you mean but it's i think if i think i think they also miss an opportunity in that he's a legion academy member right yeah is he a legion yeah yes yes he is so if they would have pumped up the notion that he is quote unquote the superman of the 31st century more uh-huh and then he does the 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 turn i think it would have made it even more effective story-wise yes. yes it worked for me because it's going against everything we know about mon it also worked for me because i was like oh that's interesting because what if they did that in the real in the comics i mean he's supposed to be the most powerful humanoid in the dc universe you know so 
that was fun. It was fun to see, even though he gets his butt whooped in this, like surprisingly, <laughs> by not only just Supergirl, but, but by the I was like, this is Monel, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, come on. Um. So I liked that. I did like that. I I, I didn't mind that turn at all. I I, mm-hmm. I don't know what what other Legion fans might have thought of that, but I I was okay with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was probably one of the biggest differences. Yeah. Besides, you know, uh, maybe some visual stuff or whatever, but in terms of character, it was one of the biggest changes from what we know. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, for that reason, I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it made me think, you know, could they get away with that in the comics? Uh, maybe <laughs> pre Bendis reboot. Um, would I buy it? I, 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 I sort of thought, yeah, I think I would. I mean, he was trapped in the Phantom Zone for a a thousand years the, his how mental, does that yeah, yeah he's a little cuckoo probably <laughs> <laughs> how does that warp your your brain and, sure. and your outlook and over time and uh, yeah that's that is a that is a story that was just sitting there yeah and nobody picked it up there was a storyline in the archie legion after zero hour where they had a, a group called the white triangle i think it was called and they were I think they were trying to kick aliens off of earth or something like that. And I thought we got one of the Legion members turned out to be a white triangle member. I can't remember Mm. now that I say that, I wonder if that's where they got the inspiration for this story, but um, I might be, it's been decades since I read that. So, but as far as like, you know, if you're going to make one of the Legion members bad, okay. Now it would have been great if he was an actual Legion member, and all the other Legion members went, oh, no, we got to fight that dude. Yeah. And then that's why you need the entire Legion to fight him. And you got Element Lad trying to encase him in lead. And, you know, like that would have been cool. Like just. And, and you wouldn't even need Brainiac showing up at that point. No. No. But because they have to tie these stories together. And yeah. I, I suppose, no, to be fair. I kind of like the idea of, well, I like one aspect. I like the idea of the dark circle being started in the 21st century and evolved and progressed and, and uh, built up over that thousand year span to, you know, what they are in the Mm -hmm. 31st century. Although, I mean, there's really from a, just from a storytelling standpoint, there's no difference between them whatsoever yeah. in the in the way that they're shown in the 21st century versus yeah. the 31st. Yeah, you're right. You know, it didn't need Brainiac. It could have been Monel. It could have yeah. been Monel. And then when he's being his villain self and telling his story like they all do, he could say, Yeah, I met your cousin a thousand years ago. Yes. And and he wanted to put me into the Phantom Zone or something like that, right? And and maybe he's that's when he started the Dark Circle. And he creates this story of like, oh, yeah, I met your cousin. We were like brothers. I got sick and I got put in the Phantom Zone. No, no, no. What actually happened was he tried to take over the world <laughs> maybe after Supergirl had left. You know, like you could have done all kinds of like Oh, wow, yeah. Stuff. And then, uh, you know, so that... Yeah, you didn't need Brainiac. Did you watch the Krypton TV show? Did you ever watch that? I did not. Um, it's only two seasons. It's it's not terrible. Uh, I actually quite enjoyed it uh, for what it was. It actually has a really good version of Lobo that shows up that hmm. I actually quite enjoy. Um, they had Brainiac as their big bad for the first season. Was he in the second season? I think it was in the second season too, but definitely in the first season. That was a really good, creepy version of that character. And there are parts of his portrayal in this one that made me think of his live action version as well. Um, uh, as far as like, you know, cool brainiacs, that, that was a good, I, I, I liked him in Krypton. And they even did the, um, they kind of did the giant, head ship the skull ship that he has they, there's a version of it not quite the same but um so when i saw this version and they're dealing with he's he's it's almost like body dysmorphia almost you know because all of a sudden it becomes like this 
you know, body horror thing. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, it kind of reminds me of the Krypton version. Um, but by that point, I was like, why does it have to be Brainiac? I don't care. He hasn't been in the story. I don't care about him. I, that Yeah, it's funny you say that because I, I, I was thinking the same thing. It's like, why all of a sudden are we into this body horror stuff with Brainiac being the amalgamation of those other three Brainiacs that Timberwolf referenced earlier in the movie. Yeah. And they're, it's not, it's not like they're somehow like, um, uh, the personality inhabitors in his brain. It's, they are literally the bodies of those three other brainiacs forming. Well, uh, the, the, you know, brainiac himself, the re reconstructed yeah. brainiac, which, you know, for all of brainiacs, uh, posturing in this movie about, how, you know, he's the smartest in the room essentially. And how only he, he, you know, he did, he did, there was, you know, speaking of the world building, uh, from before he, at one point, he's like, there are things coming that only I can deal with. And so that I can, I kind of like that, you know, if, if there, if, if these mo tomorrow verse movies are building to something and if Brainiac in the 31st century is saying that, that means, you know, we could get another subpar legion movie <laughs> but but you know it, what if he's the smartest guy in the room wh why did he think why why is it so smart to jam three of your your uh successors into your reconstructed body i mm -hmm. i didn't get that yeah other than it i you know it's kind of cool to see them i don't know i i it, why 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 yeah yeah <laughs> And then, you know, the whole miracle machine thing, which wasn't introduced until it had to be introduced and he's going to use it to change the universe. And then it gets shunted away into who knows where, like another universe. Like that's not safe. That's not smart. Like, right. Okay. Yeah. What it, it taking this thing that could destroy every, all of reality and just shunting it away to another reality and hope, hope for the best, I guess. <laughs> Not very, not very uh, enlightened uh, for for those two characters for Brainiac and Brainiac Five and Supergirl. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't need to go in totally in depth to, you know, I'm not trying to like pick it apart for quote unquote, <laughs> quote unquote plot holes. You know, like people yeah. use that they use that word way too much. Um, it's a lot of it is just when it got to the ending. I was just, I was kind of very confused about it. And then um, by that point, it was like, this is not, this is not the Legion of Superhero movies that I thought it was going to be. Mm. And um, it's frustrating. It's not so frustrating, frustrating because it, it does follow the formula, it seems, like all the other Legion appearances. So it's like, okay, it's the same old, same old. Like, who are they getting to... Why are they not mining the people that could make a really good Legion of Superheroes movie different? You know, like, you know, I don't know who, but I don't think it here's it doesn't make me excited to see War World. That's for sure. It's the same director and same writer. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, OK, yeah. all right. And I wasn't impressed with her Shazam series either. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That's why that's why my question was, you know, who is the target for this and why are they really that successful that they can keep pumping them out? Now, we don't know what's going to happen because DC Warner Brothers is being the whole, you know, James Gunn verse thing. We don't know what's going to happen with that. Plus, we don't know because WB is slowly, you know, in, not to make a joke like this, but they are imploding. Just mm -hmm. like just like other things in the new cycle these days. Um, so it's like, who knows? <laughs> you finally got what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry. Who knows what's going to happen with these animated movies, you know? Yeah. They need a shot in the arm as well. Yeah, I, I would really love to understand, know why they decided to do a Legion movie. Right. Given that so like I said, this is the sixth movie. Well, we were supposed to get that animated series on HBO. So well, did they, okay. yeah. did they morph that into this? Well, do you, I was going to ask you that. Do you remember? Uh, my recollection is we heard about 
the show that Bendis was writing. And then I heard about this movie, mm -hmm. but obviously given this animation, they would have had to have been working on that uh, either concurrently with that news or, or even most likely previous to this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, 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 I suspect it's not that 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 Bendis's movie or project morphed into this. Uh, it was just parallel development, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe they started doing this because, well, I'm mean, obviously because they're using a lot of the Sook designs. Right. Uh, so you know, how many years ago now has was was uh, the the Sook Bendis Legion? Uh, that that may have. So they 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 launched that title. To much fanfare. The Legion is back. Bendis is writing it. Ryan Sook is drawing it. Um, and then, uh, you know, somebody at DC Animation is like, "Oh, we should, we should take this and make our own thing with it, right?" But, but yeah, why? Who besides people like us who <laughs> we diehard Legion fans? There, yeah. mm, I'm just what? What is it? What is the connection here to the rest of this Tomorrowverse stuff? Besides a tenuous connection to right. the previous movie, and then a post-credit scene that sets us up for the next one, right? right. Which are the Legion going to be part of that? Yeah, that that wouldn't make sense to me. But I'm going to make a bold and shocking statement: We need to stop living in the shadow of Justice League Unlimited and and the Timverse. Ooh, that for, is bold for DC's animation to grow. They need to stop doing what they're used to doing. Yes. And, uh, you know, and people could say, well, it is different. It's the tomorrow. Version. No, it's still, it's still, it's still the great, great, great grandchild of the Batman animated series. You know, they're still, uh, yeah. I mean, we're even getting another Bruce, Tim Batman series, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, why are they not handing this thing over? to whatever the the whatever is the most popular animated show on netflix right now to those creators or to to that sensibility at least mm -hmm. and is the <laughs> boy am i i shouldn't say this is the writer of she-ra really the one you want for your legion of superheroes movie <laughs> right like i i've said this multiple times it should be the person that is writing the 800th season of Power Rangers because it's still successful. Oh, yeah. You know, it should be whatever new thing is coming out of wherever in the world that that is going to see these characters and, and create this like sci-fi futuristic epic that will appeal to people who read manga or younger, you know. I just think these movies feel old before they even come out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why they do appeal to us because we're like, oh, look, there's Cat's Fall. Wee! You know, <laughs> ooh, Monel went bad. Oh, that's cool. You know, that, no, to be fair, that is the one element that is like, okay, that is smart. All the other stuff, we've been here. We've been here before. Yeah. So that, that's frustrating. It's frustrating as, a, as someone who wants, um, because there was an excitement for those early movement movies, as you mentioned, like they, they came out in, in like the mid two thousands. Right. I remember like the early two thousands, mid two thousands, when they were like, here's, we're going to do doomsday. We're going to do, I forget what the other one was. And we were going to do Judas contract. There was like three that they were going to do, or maybe it was just oh, two, right. yeah. but they never did the Judas one contract until years, years, years later. Right. Um, and they were exciting and the, and the adaptations were cool because they tried to div they tried to use Frank Miller style or of art or or some other artist you know like the all-star super superman one was they tried to use the Frank Quitely you know visuals yeah yeah um but i don't know just this one is just why is it why is the legion always have to be the one that that they're like I don't know. Let's, this will be enough. It feels like they say this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yes, I totally agree. But you know, to be fair, you can't, you can't take a property that no one knows about except us <laughs> and throw in a bajillion characters that have lines 
and and characterizations and a plot it's just it's just not going to work in 83 minutes i disagree <laughs> i don't know i think you could do it i think you could do it because okay maybe for a movie well first of all we we don't know if they're going to come back in another movie, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe a move, maybe if they fought differently, like a movie then spawns a TV show. And I know animation is animation and it takes a while. You know, I get that. Um, I don't think you can do it the other way either, like just sort of tickling people's butts, you know, like just we're going to tease you with these. Like just go in, just be challenging, be, be challenging, be oh, different. You that know? is not what they want to do right I know, now. I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. They're boring. I don't know. I just think of like, I just think like I watch a first episode of, of uh, a popular anime, anime on Netflix. And I'm like, I have no idea who these characters are and what's going on, but it's so fascinating and it's interesting, <laughs> you know, like, because it's not necessarily about, well, who are they? But it's like, they, they bring something to it, an atmosphere, a mood. You feel something as you watch them, you know, like um, it's just disappointing, mm. you know, because we want this this property to exist. <laughs> and it barely exists in the comics these days. Yeah. And it barely exists in other media as well. Well, you, do you want a, an even more um, example or another example of condemnation of this? Uh oh. Uh so I as I was rewatching this uh the other night, my wife came downstairs and sat down on the couch and and uh the 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 the, the sequence that we <laughs> probably wanted to fast forward through or did uh was playing and she she made a derogatory comment about the 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 tension between mm. uh, Supergirl and Brainiac Five. And, and it wasn't like, it wasn't mentioned in a, in a positive way. It was just like, oh, this again, kind of a, kind of a reaction. Interesting. <laughs> and my wife, my, so uh, for context, my wife is not a comic book reader. Um, she doesn't know most of these characters if, if, if really any. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, this is a totally new thing to her just, pl you know, to be plopped it right in the, basically in the middle of the movie and see this very obvious thing that she's seen him uh, you know a bajillion times in television and movies and you know she, even she was like eh. yeah yeah <laughs> well let's not beat up on it too much more are there smaller <laughs> things that <laughs> okay, okay well here's a plus here's a smallest we can round it out i don't think we need to you know like i said it's i think we know how we feel about it i thought the time bubble was really cool uh, all right that was one of the things i liked as well yeah right Smart. So, okay. I want to ask you about that specifically because Superman describes it as travel between two fixed points in time, mm -hmm. which I guess that is their way of, of saying time travel is not this uh, easy to do thing. It's not, it's not where you can just like go back and, and kill Hitler type situation right mm -hmm. it's only this this point in time and that point in time um which makes the later the the post credit scene it's like w which point in time is it is there a span of a point of time mm. <laughs> or or is the points of time uh, uh uh created when they use the device it's just i you know I, I started thinking about it too much but 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 to your point that was really cool this this uh this you know it's 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 a ball a bubble whatever mm -hmm. and yeah he, he instead of instead of the legion getting into a time bubble ball whatever to travel time it's it's a device that opens up the 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 the, the way to traverse those two points right. that was really cool yeah yeah it's an updating right like we're not going to actually use a, a, a clear transparent bubble a device you know, that they have to climb into like no it's like, i'm going to throw this thing and it's going to open a bubble and you're going to go to the future like i thought that was cool i i actually really appreciated that mm -hmm. um it 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 allows for limitations it allows for cool visual effects in the movie you know not that again they weren't earth shattering but it, it 
it's something you can animate um, in an interesting way. Plus, it also allows for them to go back and forth quickly. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. do all the other stuff. I like that. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so speaking of you know cool visual things, uh, what do you think of Brainiac 5's force field? Oh technology. yes, yes. Also cool. Completely different, right? From the comics, right? Which I've always, I, I, you know, Brainiac Five is my favorite Legionnaire, and so, um, you know, uh, I, well, I was disappointed in in this depiction of, of him, uh, but it was different, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's he's more emotional. He's got he's 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 prideful. Although I guess I guess our brainy is also that too. But yeah. Uh, uh, but but the 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 force field tech, you know, he, um, it's kind of he, he, they they employ these hexagon shapes, connections. Uh, it's not just a force field that protects him, but he can manipulate it, like he used it, or I guess he was about to, and, and Timberwolf came in and interrupted them, but he was about to use it like a like a uh, kind of like a, a, a boxing glove r- mm-hmm. battering ram type thing against Supergirl. He, the, 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 the used um, some sphere con- constructs to uh, take out the vault door uh, also to uh, in an earlier scene to zap Supergirl. Mm-hmm. You know, they were really stretching the whole, <laughs> the whole idea of a force field. Cause it was doing a lot of things. Oh, there that one point, um, I guess he adapted the tech or, or he could u- just do it with this tech, but uh, creating illusions. So kind of stepping on uh, princess projectors shoes a little bit there, but, but it was, it was a nice change of pace. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it was, what can we do with this character? This, these are the smart choices. What can we do with this character either that we haven't seen before or looks cool because he's animated and, and not just on a yes. page. Yeah. And it reminded me of of the way Sue Storm uses her invisibility powers in the Fantastic Four, where she can create things, you know, Mm -hmm. and it made sense. You know, I I was totally fine with that. One of the other things that I thought was fun and and cute and and not too much to the story uh, here and there, but um, just including Prody was fun. (laughs) I wondered if you would like Prody. Eh, Just a little squiggly guy, you know, like. What is he? We don't know, you know, but he can shape shift and he doesn't do much, but um, okay, that's fine. I was all for, I, I was hoping that they would show more alien characters. So I like, I guess that's where we get one. I guess we, I mean, we, we do see some alien, well, you mentioned them before, like we saw tell us um, some of the other, Right. Legion, Legion members of various groups of them we get to see, but, but it's, yeah, it, you have to freeze frame really to see, <laughs> to yeah. see them. Well, they so. must be hard to animate because, you know, tell us in a 80 minute movie must be a chore, you know, but it's, yeah, I, I can't imagine technology is that backwards that they can't figure that out by now. Yeah. You know, I mean, so. Well, okay. So uh, that just, that, uh, made me think. What did you think of the makeup of the 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 academy members? Why those members? Well, I, I I said it before. I think it's the safe choice because a lot of them have already been seen before in the Legion of Superheroes. You, you think it's there. that? So there, I really do. There's a uh, a visual history connection that they're mm-hmm. trying to make. Maybe. I mean, why use bouncing bouncing boy, but then you don't really use bouncing boy. Why do you use phantom girl, but you don't really use phantom girl, you know, like why did it have to be those characters? Why couldn't have, couldn't it have been somebody else? Like, mm-hmm. why did what? they, we've seen some of them before. Um, part of me, I, I wrote down, I was flipping through my notes and I was like, Oh, when they actually do something at the end, they almost work like the espionage squad a little bit. You know, oh yeah, they're yeah. doing things defensively or whatever. Well, Phantom Girl kind of saves the day. Yeah, in in a sense, by by freeing everybody from their 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 captivity. Right. I think I think you use some of them because what are they? I'm assuming the choice is what do they offer for animation? What does Triplet Girl offer? Offer? Oh, she can make three bodies. Okay, 
What is bouncing board? He can bounce around. What does, you know, does, does, is Dream Girl really interesting for an animated uh, movie? You know? Yeah, good point. Um, Timberwolf is cool because, as one person said in a comment somewhere, they're like, oh, they just ripped off Wolverine. It's like, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> but he can, he's, he can be animated. Same thing with Shadow Lass, with her powers. So I guess that's why you have to pick and choose certain ones. Mm -hmm. So it was uninspired to me, even if maybe I understand some of the choices. But I, th I still think there were better choices. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's it, folks. I know that's like, no, I don't know. What, what, else, what else is there to say about this? I really don't think there's anything else to say. <laughs> Oh uh, well, I get. We should talk about. I, you know, we you touched on already about uh, the the how Supergirl deals with the loss of her mother. Because mm -hmm. I really like that. Like I said, but I think I said this before. I really like that opening scene mm -hmm. with them because they have they have a a real relationship. You, you get a sense of their mother daughter relationship, their their competitiveness, mm -hmm. uh, Kara's, which. Everybody calls her Kara in right. this movie, it's, and and to Kara. me it's it's Kara, right. uh, which oh uh, speaking of this uh, on on my Blu-ray they included uh, the two Superman the animated series uh, is it Little Girl Lost or mm -hmm. I think so yeah and I I started watching that um, just in case uh, I wasn't sure if we were going to talk about those or not and they call the they called Supergirl then. Kara. So I'm like, yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, but you know, Kara has a bit of an attitude, which that continues on. So at least, at least there's that continuity of character, but, but, but there is, but there is a character with her and, and they do a really good job of developing her in a very short period of time, but then it becomes very one note. Yeah. The rest of the movie until the end. Well, like that scene I, I mentioned before, you know, she comes to that realization that Brainiac Five is, you know, there's there there's a similarity between their situations, and so she she starts to develop a little bit of sympathy for him, and then it develops into more. But then we get the end with the weird disconnected uh, situation with her mother mm -hmm. from the beginning and the end. Um. But I, but I did, I, I did like. At least they brought her back, e even if it the the th the through line is not really there, right? Um, and that whole idea, because at the at the end of the the sequence at the beginning, her mother gives her the badge because now Kara is I have a hard time saying that unless I think about it. Um, it's going to be I forget which guild it is. Oh. Uh... The mil was it the military guild something so anyway it doesn't matter Bank, yeah yeah um and then some i guess through the the magic of the miracle machine uh her mother gives her that badge or or I, oh, wait does she give it to her or suddenly car just has it i don't remember now anyway she's then wearing that badge for some scenes after that when in the fight with monel the final fight with monel She's wearing that badge. I thought that was a nice touch, a nice connection between for you know the mother and daughter thing being uh, represented represented through that. Yeah, she. I mean, I, I do like the characterization of Supergirl in this. I think it's the one thing that they paid attention to, even if the story for me doesn't necessarily connect the dots completely. I, yeah. I think, I think she's really fully fleshed out i think that's why it's a disservice not to call it supergirl and the legion of superheroes um uh and 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 to your point of you know why use the legion of superheroes like what is the goal is the goal for the legion of superheroes or is the goal to introduce supergirl because she comes across way way better than this whole other corner of the dc universe that you just created um, plus the layering of Krypton's uh, of her backstory and and um, which I imagine we probably saw before because um, she's been in a few of those animated movies before, like the Apocalypse one. I think that's mm, the yeah 
Yeah. So um, it's not that it's inconsistent or mishmashy. It's it's just you wanted them to take the right hand turn and they took a left hand turn a lot of times and it's like i don't understand why you went there. well i don't think they took a turn at all they just went well, right down the middle <laughs> <laughs> any other points to this no i guess not i most most of everything else i have in here is like why did they do this what, what that doesn't make sense or you right. know just just complaining i will add this this is uh, this really bugged me i the last last bad thing i'll say maybe okay maybe you know, like I said before, this is a PG-13 movie uh, with some violence and language, as I said before. What's the language? It's because in the end, in the fight with Monel, when he realizes that basically he's defeated, he, I, may, I don't know if, if you want to bleep this out or what, but you know, he just, he just says, shit. I mean, yeah. what, how, <laughs> how does that fit the tone of this movie to throw that one word in so they can be more cool adult. I don't know what the hell they were trying to do with that. It's like, I don't know if the rating to them means a different de demographic and does the rating PG 13 versus PG. Does that mean something different for how stores order things, you know? Like it probably has something to do with some dumb algorithm that we will never know because <laughs> we're not part of those conversations. It's almost like they're, they're like, you have to throw in one, throw in one so we can sell it as, oh, this is, you know, so they yeah. can sell it. I, I'm that, that has to be the, that has to be what it is. Some Ugh. bean counter somewhere, you know, it's like, wait, it's PG. No, it has to be PG 13. All right. Well then. I, yeah, I just, uh, you're probably right. I just, <laughs> why would a Daxamite use an earth term like that? Yeah. Yeah. Just so I, I, I don't know what I, I can't answer that. I, I uh, my mind is boggled by why they would choose to have that character say that word. Right. You know, I, I don't care. I, you know, language, whatever, you know, my, my favorite word is, is the F word. So, you know, I, I don't, it doesn't bother me that people use words like that. It's just, it, it's got to make sense. It's got to, it's got to be true to the character, to the story. Right. And I, I just don't buy this. All right. I'm, I'm done complaining. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully that was interesting to listen to. <laughs> well, wait, do you, can we, can we just, uh, since uh, I did the, I did the nerd thing and I, and I, 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 fr uh, freeze, froze frame, freeze framed. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what, uh, what are, what were the interesting legionnaires that you happened to see in those, in those scenes? I mean, um, you mentioned I've, comic queen before and comic some queen, others, you know, tell us cat's ball it was interesting to see cat's ball of, of all people, you know, from, um, the one that I was like, well, there's a missed opportunity design wise is why didn't they use Atmos? He was there. Uh, yeah. Yep. You know, what a cool look he could have had. But outside of that, I was, I got to that. I saw that scene and I was like, you SOBs, you're doing it again. You're just tickling us with this. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not falling for it this time. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, can I, let me ask you this. Uh, there was a scene when the dark circle take over. Mm -hmm. and they're knocking out legionnaires right and left, even though they've got these guns that at least in the 21st century will just vaporize you. But for some reason in the 31st century, when they shoot triplicate girl or at least one of her bodies, it's this, which, okay, there's your PG 13. That makes sense yeah. because they show her smoldering body with yeah. pieces of her burning. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty graphic for, a kid's movie you know, yeah. sensibly a kid's movie. Um, uh, but, but uh, my point is, <laughs> I swear to God, one of those characters was color kid. Oh yeah. I, I wrote that down. I said, was that color kid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You and I are on the same wavelength there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, it was, you know, you're showing the, the, the scope of the Legion, but there's no purpose behind it. Mm hmm. And or, or, or they'll 
I'm, I'm doing it again. Or they'll throw out uh, this little tidbit, like Timberwolf mentions President Saturn Girl. Mm-hmm. It's just once in that that dialogue between the the three of them, and that's it. It's like, well, what is she president of the Legion? Is she president of the United Planets? What does that mean? Why why say that? <laughs> oh, we didn't we didn't even talk about Arm Fall Off Boy. What did you what did you um, think of? I mean, he's you know it's goofy. <laughs> he was in the Suicide Squad movie, you know, to some degree. It was. It's another like. I think they use him because of his visual. Because yeah. he did have some cool visuals at the end. So if they made another one, without knowing anything, would you, would you, would you give it a chance? Oh, I I watch all of them, but I I <laughs> I go in with with much hesitation. Um, and this one, I don't think, I don't think I was like overly excited about it. I just was like, okay, here it goes. Okay, here it is. Oh, okay. Here's, oh, that's interesting. Oh, and I was like, oh, here we go. Same thing. Um, I, I will say though, I kind of had the same attitude about it, but I, you, despite the fact that I've complained a lot about some things about this, oh, this is because I care. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was better than I anticipated. Oh. Okay. I don't know if I could say that. <laughs> and, and it was like we said before, it, it's mostly on the, the, uh, the strength of Supergirl and yeah, how that, she's portrayed yeah, sure. and what she's going through. Um, even though there's a lot of fall down there. So. Yeah. If this was the first Legion thing they had ever done animated wise, I still would feel the same about this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and probably more so because if it's the first one, yeah, you have all these expectations. There you go. If you've seen this movie and you want to give your reactions, please do. You can send email peter at the dailyrios.com. Yeah, let us know if uh, if we are just way off base uh, according to your viewing of this movie. And you can email me at longboxreview at gmail.com. So uh, we will uh, jump back to our regular Legion project format and our, our regular read of the series uh, for our next episode, whenever that is. Uh, that'll be issues 42 and, well, 42 is the next one, but that's a two-parter, 42 and 43, as we dip more into the how the Millennium uh, touches the Legion of Superheroes universe. So that should be interesting. Well, there you go. Millennium, Brainiac, all ties together, Peter. <laughs> I'm looking forward to our our, our uh, next regular yeah. Legion Project episode. Yeah. And then I'm sure we'll get back to a Tales eventually. I'm sure there'll be an annual or some special thing down the road, or we'll we'll get bored and we're like, let's talk about something, you know, ah! something outside. What are you talking about? How can we get bored talking about the Legion? <laughs> I think we probably, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't checked my notes, but I mean, we're coming up on issue 50 of the Baxter mm-hmm. one. So yeah. I have to, I have a feeling we probably are going to stick with the series for a while unless something happens. So yeah, that should be fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We will see you all or you'll hear us next time. <laughs>